Welcome to the fourth day of International Nature Journaling Week 2023. Today we're focusing on our sense of hearing by tuning into the songs of nature. When we begin to pay attention to the sounds around us, we notice the richness and diversity of the sounds in the natural world. You might hear a cricket in the grass beside you, or a bird in a tree, or the sound of wind moving through the foliage. Familiar natural sounds can also bring you a sense of home. Hello, I'm Kelly Ballantyne and I'm in Chicago, Illinois in the United States. Song is one of the best ways that I really connect with nature. Those of us that live in big cities are never far away from sounds of planes, trains, and automobiles. But when I tune my ear to the song of birds or insects or frogs, those other sounds just really fade into the distance. Birdsong also really connects me to both time and place. So here, as the seasons change, we have some birds that are leaving and some birds that are arriving after several months of being in a different part of the world. And whenever I hear a bird that I haven't heard in several months, it's like getting a call from a dear old friend. If I'm in a new place and I hear a familiar bird song, uh, that's almost like bringing me a sense of comfort. Uh, I, you know, it's like having another friend that's there and visiting that spot as well. And it gives me some clues too about what kind of habitat I might be able to explore. And then no matter what, if I hear a new bird song, that always brings some joy and excitement and wonder about something new that I might be about to discover for myself. So whenever I'm nature journaling, even if I'm not drawing a bird, I would like to note down the birds that I'm hearing around me. I might uh, write out the mnemonic for the song if I know it, or I might try to describe uh, what the song sounds like in words. And then when I go back to those nature journaling pages, uh, it just, again, it connects me to that time and place that I find nature journaling is so good at doing. Hi, I'm Richa Keria. I'm a wildlife illustrator based out of New Delhi, India. I have been nature journaling for a long time now, but probably more regularly since 2020. Uh, and that's when my diary entries were almost on a daily basis. So nature journaling week is a very good idea because it's a wake up call for people like us who have been nature journaling but uh, to get back into the regular practice and for people who have not started yet, please start because you'll be amazed at the kind of observation and the fact, the world of fascination it actually opens up for you and besides being the fact that it is also uh, a good record of citizen science. So uh, today's theme I'll talk about is sound. So for me, sound has been very fascinating because it is as a sense uh, which you know you observe or you focus on later. Because the first uh, sense are always is the visuals, so the color, shape, uh, and everything else of the objects or whatever we see around us is what registers in our mind first. Uh, then it's. I mean, perhaps sound comes later because obviously as in everything around us not making sound all the time also. Um, but sound is fascinating because you, know, you, can, you can hear it even when you don't really need to step out. You can hear sounds all the time but as an exercise that I try to identify all the sounds I could hear around my house. And that actually led me to interesting observations as well. So the first thing I actually observed there are many birds which do not really open their beak uh, while making a sound. So when, even when I reach the bird, I was in a bit of a doubt is the sound actually coming from this because the beak is closed. And uh, so yeah, barbets and cuckoos are two birds which do that. So they're actually their calls are like not from the uh, from their beak, but it's from their uh, throat or from from their belly. So uh, only thing I've been moving is their, uh, probably their throat would be vibrating a bit or uh, uh, in case of Google, it actually moves up and down. So it is very interesting to observe that, that the, the throat uh, moving up and down. Uh, then of course there are, I mean, uh, there, there is 
Hi there, I'm Louise. I live in Malaysia. I have been here to Germany for a couple of years, and this will be my second international trip to Germany. So the climate here is pretty hot and humid. So some days I'll come out with my friend and go for a jungle hike like this, and we'll take loads of photos. We'll stop and we'll look, and then we'll go home and maybe add to our journal pages indoors where it's nice and cool and we're not going to get bitten by loads of mosses. Um, and sometimes I might sit, I'm just learning to sit down and do a quick sketch or two. But for the prompt of song, what I think I would love to do is get better at recognising some of the bird songs that I hear regularly when I'm walking uh, near my house, which is a big long road the jungle either side but um, the cars and trucks come through so it's not very good to sit down but I'm going to find a really quiet spot if I can go really early when the birds have just got up and I actually needed to prepare something to see how it will work because I'm quite new to nature journaling it's all pretty experimental so when I find my sit spot hopefully early early when it's hardly light I am going to take this and see how it goes. So I know I'm going to hear the beautiful song of a pied robin, which is a bit like a blackbird. And I think I'll do a little quick picture here. And then this space, I may be going to try and write or even draw in colored pencil. What does it, what's that song like? Does it repeat? Um, does it go up? Does it go down? Is it short and sharp? Or is it a beautiful liquid trilling? and then see what I feel like drawing or recording. It might be words, it might be, uh, you know, I don't know yet, we'll find out. And then a kingfisher, I know I'll probably hear a kingfisher and I'm getting good at recognizing that. A woodpecker, those are difficult to tell the difference between. A drongo, that's a really distinctive call, but I've never tried documenting it for a journal before. You see, I've got some scrap paper, which is art pictures. So that's what I'm going to do, I think, and I'll see how it goes when I'm thinking about song. And here's one that I did in my garden with sunbirds the other day, just to see how it would go. I've got a quick picture and then I wrote down what I was thinking, whether I heard them. And then I may even use this as a resource before I go on my walks that I do so regularly, just to help with my memory, which is one of the reasons that I started nature journaling. But there's so many ways that you could think about song and think about ways of adding it to your journal. It might be something that is outside of human hearing. It might be about whale songs or dolphin songs or something like that. It may be that you really want to find out more and do some research about why that happened. What's it like? What does it look like if you see the wavelengths of something that's outside of human hearing? So, whatever you do for today for song, have a fantastic time and look forward to seeing what you do if you're sharing it. Take care. Bye now.
Hi, I'm Joanna. I live with my husband and my children in a beautiful spot close to the Grampian Mountains in Victoria, Australia. I love being outside and I love listening to the sounds of nature. Richard Raw said that nature is a song of praise that never stops singing. The sounds of the birds and the sounds of the winds and the trees, the sound of the water flowing over the rocks or the cicadas in summer, these sounds bring joy and they inspire my journaling. One of the things that I also really love about journaling is being with my children in nature. I love it when they chatter as they walk, when they discuss the things that they find around them, when they want to show me something that they found or the latest journal entry. Um, these are really precious moments that are building memories for a lifetime. Come join us for a week of journaling. Ready? One, two, three. Come, Come join us for a Come week join of us for a week Come of on. Come, Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Today, listen to the sounds that describe your nearby nature. Can you hear a familiar bird or insect that comes around this time of year? And what about listening out for the non-living natural elements like wind and water that can also have their own song? Tune into these sounds today and see if you can capture them in your nature journal.